Hallo, herzlich willkommen beim Café Steel Point. Wir haben heute wieder Bruno Ducou aus Bordeaux zu Gast. Mit Bruno hatten wir schon in, unser, in der ersten Woche von Café Steel Point ein ganz spannendes Gespräch über das Herz und die Emotionen in der Osteopathie. Aber die Zeit war zu kurz und deshalb haben wir beschlossen, heute fortzusetzen. Bruno ist Osteopath in Bordeaux, wie gesagt, und auch ein profilierter Kursleiter, vor allem im Postgraduate-Bereich, vor allem wenn es um Kranio geht. Und vor allem, wenn es um diesen Bereich der Spiritualität und der Emotionen in der Osteopathie geht. In Bordeaux betreibt er auch ein Zentrum für Kinderosteopathie und auch eine Ausbildung für Kinderosteopathie. Aber er macht auch Kurse und Ausbildungen, wo es um Osteopathie in Verbindung mit Meditation und in Verbindung mit dem Thema Bewusstsein geht. Wir schalten um zu Bruno. Herzlich willkommen. Im Café Stillpoint. Thank you for coming again. Uh, I just told everyone that uh, we had such an interesting first conversation that we decided to continue uh, in the follow-up. How, how, how is the situation in France? How are you doing a, a few days, a, a few weeks later after the lockdown? It's still first thank you to receive me at the cafe still point i think it's the only cafe open in vienna for yes, now yes so, it is so lucky to be invited in that cafe and in france too all the cafe restaurants are closed we can't work no it's the same we are supposed to open our doors on may 11 you mm -hmm. know and schools mm -hmm. may open but still we don't know exactly how it's gonna happen What um, I'm happy to share that in Bordeaux, where I live now, there's a lot of osteopaths, a group of osteopaths working for people, uh, healing people in a, in a retreat center and hospitals, you know, and that's it's good to help these people who do a lot of work and to do it for free. And I hope it could help to let osteopathy be well, well appreciated by, by the population. But, you know. That, that's an excellent project. And I, I, I also think it's very interesting what you sent me, that uh, there is research that is trying to document what is done and the effects uh, that osteop osteopathic treatments can have on, on COVID disease. Yeah, I think it's leaded by Brian Wagenhardt mm -hmm. you know, from, from the, uh, osteopathic research in Kirksville. And uh, they try, try to connect worldwide all the people who have been working with people with uh, in osteopathy with COVID-19. Uh, mm -hmm. So I think it's good if you know some, some or if some of you are working with people, you know, ill people, I think it's good to, to mm -hmm. connect each other and uh, to be in touch with that research center. I, I think it's, a, it's an excellent project. Here in Austria, I know that some colleagues Have, have made contact with hospitals and with uh, nursery homes. Uh, but luckily in Austria, we don't, we don't have so many people re who really have the COVID disease and who are in hospital. All the hospitals are empty right now and waiting for patients. And uh, the big wave of patients uh, luckily did not come. So I'm not sure if any treatments are already ongoing, but I, I will uh, tell those colleagues about the project. I, th I think documenting what we do, in, especially in situations like that, is really important. Yeah, I think, you know, it's amazing how fear exaggerates also the, the illness. Also. Absolutely. In, in France, Spain, Italy, we have more people than in, uh, in uh, Germany and Austria. You mm -hmm. know, maybe so because you have the plus discipliné. How you say? Yes, you... more more discipline. I, I'm I'm not sure. You, you know the the other day I read I read an interesting article uh, where the journalist speculated that uh, it's it's a, it's about trust in government, and the more people trust in their own government, the better all the COVID measures are working, and the less people trust in their governments, like in the US, the UK, or maybe in France. Yes the less all people are disciplined and the less they are doing what they're supposed to do and the, the bigger the problem becomes, which is an yeah. interesting theory at least. Mm -hmm. That's right, yes. Otherwise, it's, 
geographically it's not so logical why there should be a big difference between France and Germany, for example. So it must be a behavioral or emotional part of the response. Oh yeah, sure. We we need to think of it. Mm -hmm. But once again, osteopathy is uh, we are lucky to be on the that path mm -hmm. of osteopathy, that pathless osteopath, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, because you know we are looking for the health instead of looking for disease. Mm -hmm. So that's what I can share. Mm -hmm. the, this is one of the uh, this is one of the discussions we had here in the cafe. Uh, two or three weeks ago, where Christian Hartmann from Germany uh, told us about uh, medicine a hundred years ago, when when Claude Bernard from from, from France uh, was championing a, a a medicine that was working on the on the milieu interne, uh, yeah. which is actually another word for for the health in a person, and you, you can yeah. see it like that. Which, but it was just that Pasteur and his uh, his way of identifying enemies and fighting enemies just became more important and became the mainstream in medicine. And that's really accurate for these days mm -hmm. with the virus. Virus is seen as an enemy. Yeah. You know, the French president spoke of war, you know, against an enemy. Ah, you know, okay. that, mm -hmm. And I think we are all in a global in a, uh, field of information. Mm -hmm. This virus, like the microbes, are part of this information from the nature, mm -hmm. I think. Okay, so thank you for giving us an update. I, I think you prepared some slides also for, for today. Yes. Do you want me to share this slide? Yes, okay. please. Let's play. Let's see if we get it to work. Yes, now we got it. Thank you. Okay, so... On the first part, I spoke of of the way osteopathy uh, is working. You know how what is life, the flow of life, mm -hmm. what's the nat nature principles uh, linked with osteopathy. I spoke also of AT steel and uh, in biogenesis how we saw human life as eternal and uh, how the human being is where matter, mind, and motion meet in a torus, mm -hmm. in a more dynamic field. Uh, we spoke also of what the patient is trying to say to us. So what's the true nature of reality? And that's in a biopsychosocial model, which is the model we are using now. Mm -hmm. and May maybe this is a good, excuse me, maybe this is a good occasion to tell uh, the people who are listening now that uh, our first interview, our first talk uh, uh, is online now on YouTube. And they, if they were not present three weeks ago, then this is a good occasion to go and look for it. Okay, yeah, sure. And today I want to share what's my osteopathic perspective on emotion. Mm -hmm. You know, the human, we have just to be aware of to see the human being in a torus, in a biomagnetic field. Mm -hmm. And the virus is present in that field now and taking on Earth. And uh, so I, I just put a f this slide because to remind you what happened, you know, in 2006, mm -hmm. saying we needed to be rooted in tradition. And Steve Paulus came from the States with the, the uh, staff. Of, uh, of 80 still, you know, mm -hmm. and gave it to Renzo Molinari to say that it's now in Europe that we are going along the tradition. Mm -hmm. So we need that axis like this, uh, this uh, wood from, uh, you know, from steel and to link with what is the bones, what is osteopathy from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. and so on this way, I think emotions are very important because it's 60% of our work, I think. In France, 10 millions of people take medication in relation with emotions, you know, mm -hmm. and psychotherapies are, are growing and growing. So we can't open our understanding of emotions without, you know, having a, a, a fracture of the skull. So 
I think emotions are our native language. It's different from emotivity. Emotions are like waves on the ocean, you know, and then on this ocean of life, there's some blocked energy flu, and these energy flu are in relation with the past. So we need to get rid of that past and help the regulation of our inner body. There's such a somatic imprint that we can find looking, being in the neutral. We don't have to be involved in the emotions of our patient, nor to, to take on, a, a, let the patient going into us. And then we can find there's emotional answers under our hands, like the change of attitudes, rapid eye motion, change of breathing, the voice vitality, and circulatory answers. We did a meditation of the circulatory system lights last time. Mm -hmm. Then what's important in relation with emotion is to put words on sensation. Putting words, we can help them to get out of you and just feel more happiness. Otherwise, we have an emotional allostatic load, you know, which is mainly the consequences of stress. And so we have, instead of having a load and to be hyper stressed, we can just look for maintaining the dynamic stability. Yeah? Don't, otherwise, the consequences are an emotional activity, hyperactivity, and the reaction on the autonomic nervous system, on the endocrine system, and the immune system, so important today. And then the other system, the digestive system, respiratory system, the heart may have dysfunctions. And at the end of this uh, talk, maybe we can do a meditation on the endocrine system to answer. So working with emotions, there are some red flags I want to put first. So I'm not a psychiatric, I'm not a psychologist. So we have, have very out of my, my work are the psychiatric problems, people with epilepsy. I'm very careful with pregnant women because they are too involved in this work. People with drug addiction or medication like, uh, you know, for nerves and people with severe illness or pathologies. We just have to be careful, you know, to know uh, our limit. So these emotions that prevent us to be happy and free may come from antenatal memories coming from the uh, bio uh, psychogenealogy part, coming from the intention of the parent, from the ignition system at the conception, from uh, genetic, epigenetic influences, to be aware that during all pregnancy, we are in a water environment and we start from a midline you know, to, to, to grow from the inside. And there's a light coming from the heart with the photon. The breathing exists during that antenatal memory through the skin. And during that time, we have no need for food, for nutrition. We have no need for clothes and just we are open to senses and emotions. So at birth, for me, the memory of the baby is not virgin. There's a lot of information from the very beginning. At week seven, there's already some, some skin sensory perception. And uh, during the next weeks, all the other senses are really functioning very you know. so the these elements you know are, are to be taken in account i think so some people say osteopathy is not for emotions it's only for the mechanical part of osteopathy i think when we think of the principles of osteopathy they are they linked they are linked with emotions you know we still spoke of the unity with the nature, but the unity is physical, but it's also emotional and spiritual. We are looking for self-regulation, but at an emotional level too. The links, the relationship between structures and functions, you know, and the, the, strict, the anatomical uh, 
emotional structures, you know, are mainly the limbic system, the, the nerves, and uh, they are in relation with all the functions of our body. Another element important that's often minor emotions are very important. And sometimes people who have a very severe problem, we have to look for the minor emotion that's still present and uh, prevent them to let the flow through and let the free circulation of emotion. So we have to meet the blockage, the pain, and acknowledge this pain without dogmatism and in relation with our limits. Excuse in me, this, excuse this, me, Bruno. It seems there is a yep. pop-up on your computer that you should update some program, Oof. which is on top of, yes. Okay. Thank you. Now it's gone. I didn't know you see it. So, we you know, everything. when you... Go... <laughs> okay. And so these uh, emotions are in relation also with the you know, the uh, unconscious with the deeper part of herself. And these parts are constantly present. The automatic mental is 80% of, of our thoughts. 80% of our thoughts are the same from yesterday and from the day before and the day before. You know, they are automatic, they are there. So we just have to look for these and get rid of that past and connection with the self, with uh, here and now. And looking for this self, we can change the world, I think. It means following our intuition to learn again and to use our three brain as translators. Uh, we, we are more aware of our, you know, of our main brain on cortical brain and we are proud of our cortical brain. But we have also reptilian brain, which is in relation with the, the deep uh, archaic reflex. But when you look at the uh, picture, this picture, the limbic system, the emotional brain is right in the middle of our brain. It connected to all the senses are connected to the brain, to the limbic system, to, to uh, you know, the thalamus, hypothalamus, you know, then the amygdala and the uh, hippocampus, all these elements are so central in connection with the frontal cortex. So these emotional centers, you know, are very important to, and to, we need to be aware of that. If we, when we're working with a patient, if we just let the bones outside of our mind, we can connect very deeply to all these uh, structures that are present and so there's so many connections all the time. So the emotional causes of trouble that we can may encounter, we said there can be family memories, element before birth, the birth process, which is an initiation important, the death of beloved ones, and we can have another view of, of the death process, what is uh, abuses, violence, earthquake, surgery, anesthesia, dental surgery, and heaviness coming from our culture of religion. All these can be emotional uh, causes. And then we have to use our body, not like a psychologist of a psychiatric, but with our hands to be aware that each cell, if of the billions of cells of our body, is a matrix, has its own intelligence. And there's a continuity of the extracellular matrix through the tissue organization of the body. And we can, through the breathing, the heartbeat, the emotion, movement of the earth, we can be aware under a clever hand to what's happening. And everything is connected like a tensegrity wave, web, with all this information giving in, you know, and uh, giving sense uh, hands. So our work as an osteopath 
for me is just to look for what's moving and we have to use fulcrum uh, that's well known for all the osteopaths and uh, in a living system everything is moving like a wheel but in a wheel where is the force is the point of balance apparently non-moving which is the axis axis of force and help to feel an automatic shifting point a place of neutral and and that's that was said to to be the the main place to begin a treatment by Roland Becker. Excuse so, me, Bruno. Uh, may I ask you a question here? Uh, first, you started to talk about emotions and then you switched to mechanical aspects like the tensegrity model or the axis or a fulcrum. Where is the connection between those two? Where, how do you see that? Yeah, I did, maybe I didn't explain that, you know, just when you're looking at uh, a body, at, uh, at someone, you see not only the physical body, I said, from the material part of the body, but in the material part of the body, the material part of the body is only 2% of the real body. Mm -hmm. you know? Everything is movement. And that's, that's where, you know, I'm, I'm thinking that emotions you know, and uh, the consequences of emotions, you know, have uh, um, places in the body when you can feel them with your hands. Right now, if you're breathing, you know, each of us, if we are breathing, we can feel there's part of our body where there are some resistances, there are part of our body where we feel it's easy to to, you know, part of our body, the main part of our body, we don't feel them you know, because it's, everything is free. So through our clever hands, we can feel the motion present, the movement. Mm -hmm. That's why I, I make the link with the emotions. Mm -hmm. And okay. that's why I speak of fulcrum, because we have to look for the fulcrum in our, our hand, which is a, a point of receptivity. You see, and uh, you know that, uh, and uh, that's the way I learned from John Pledger first. You know that my main teacher on this way of working, he would he used to say, "You're looking for energy cysts. You know, there's mm -hmm. place where there are cysts in the body, and you can feel it on the body. On the and the, I didn't put in too much images here, but when you look at someone." You can see some people are really retracted. Some people are, oh, on the other hand, they are really tense. Some people are like, uh, uh, like very light people. You, you see that on everybody. No? Does that answer your question? Mm -hmm. Thank you. So I think our, our work at the emotional level is just to look with our hand to scan the body, just to look for these places of retention, of uh, you know, in, uh, where the information is not free, and then being present. When we find a place, an energy cyst or a fulcrum, I speak of vibratory fulcrum, when your hands are at that place, you just have to be centered, mm -hmm. non-fighting, non-controlling, not looking into a violent place, just letting the deep intelligence of the body, you know, uh, opening the world from inside. Mm -hmm. Sutherland said, be still and know that you are God, he said, in fact. And when you see on the picture of someone on the water, you can feel that quietness, that balance. On the first patient in front, you see that this girl is... This lady is really balanced, but on the back, you see the others, they are in balance. They need to put something to float under their knees, under their head. You, you see all the retractions that go, that's present in the body. So that's what I look when I work with my hands. And then the emotions here is, is a link to the unseen. With a baby, 
you feel under your hands, you know, the release coming, the opening, you know, in relation with the emotional uh, part of this baby. So, yeah, it's okay for you? Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, if I go a little bit deeper, I would say, you know, we everything starts from the ignition system at conception. And from that moment, already there are a lot of information coming. The condition of our conception is important. And we, all of us, we can think of our father and our mother. I hope this moment of conception was a good moment for them. You know? And, uh, you know, from there, already this system of information is uh, going through the, the cells of the body. For me, at the beginning, you know, we were undifferentiated self. We were a whole. We are coming from a place of wholeness. And we were male and female at the same time. And then descending into the matter, into this morphogenic field, there's a dissolution of this androgyny. And then a polarization and sexualization. And we enter... Uh, a different notion of time because it's linked with this three-dimensional space we are living in but we have we are not limited we are with our senses which seems to be limited but that, that's not true i think and from this globality this wholeness from the beginning after conception we are looking all our life for the missing part. As a man, I'm looking for my feminine part. As a, a woman, we look for his mascul uh, masculine part. You see, but we know that it's present. And we spend a lot of time and energy in our lives looking for the good person outside of us. And often it's difficult because it's never ex exactly the same that, that what we were. So this human differentiation for me is really important. And we need to be aware of that. That means the woman helped the man to, to have this feminine quality and the man the, can help women to have the masculine qualities. That means we work with a, a double polarity, men and women, but inside of we are male and female too and i can see that in that picture of the of the, the snake you know that you know that the mix of both send us to that axis you know oriented axis so from this duality we can you know if we stay separate there we feel tension, compression, confinement, illness, and death. We have to look for a third element, a unified field, I think, that's within ourselves. So, once again, the principles of osteopathy, you know, in relation with this world, I think, help us to find the midline and to open from the center. And the center is for me is the heart. The, the real center is everywhere, but the, the emotional center is in the heart. So we go through this new androgen paradigm to look for true nature, I think. That helps to give a freedom you know, to ourselves. That's not easy in the ethic of relationship in our society these days, especially especially for us who are touching people and uh, you know through sexual differentiation, you know, that's really important to be aware of the way we are touching our patient from the same sex, from the other sex, to feel the therapeutic area where we can you know be really uh, ourselves and to be you know master of ourselves. That's why I say to young osteopaths and uh, 
you know that's it's important to have a supervision in our practice to be helped you know to find how to deal with this emotion with these different ways of working so we are through that beingness in connection with that with our uh, allness through the endocrine system and um, if you want i propose you just a, a few minutes to make a kind of meditation like i called an endocrine walk you know, just if you want to to just be aware of the way you're seated the way you're breathing your environment wherever you are feel if you're breathing in your belly if you're breathing in your chest if you can relax the jaw relax the buttock just you may close your eyes gently feel that emotional load relaxing and within this respiratory pose can you just visualize if you follow your two eyes inside you follow your two ears inside and you breathe with your nose into to your brain looking on the top and the back of your eyes inside the ears you go to that place which is you know the third eye for the uh, chinese medicine and which is a connection with the emotional brain from there we can find on the back of the third ventricle you know the the pineal gland which is the sun in the head if you relax the top of your head your hairs feel the connection between the two cerebral hemispheres down into your pineal gland then through the third ventricle just relax in on the cella tercica you know, the hypophysis and the the pituitary gland and the hypothalamus feel the connection of both of them let sensations coming with its images sensation connection with uh, something from your life it can be smell it can be a sound and from that pineal gland and pituitary gland pituitary you can relax the throat and feel the thyroid and parathyroid gland into the throat you just relax the chin to the chest a little bit to relax the throat and feel you know the throat growing and feel that thyroid in two parts you know there and going down behind the sternum to the thymus in two parts which is linked with a lot of emotions from childhood and you can breathe behind your chest and let the emotions in relation with the thymus then going down through the pancreas and the liver and just breathe with your diaphragm freeing the pancreas and the liver then above the kidneys the adrenals you can put your hands on the adrenals left and right feel maybe the right is a little bit lower than the left and breathe into your kidneys in relation with the fears especially in these days we don't need to be afraid just to accept things how they are we are learning to good lesson humanity is uh, learning nowadays and you can breathe into your adrenals and feel the warmth coming on them and following the movement from the kidney to the belly to the ovary or the testicles and breathe in your gonads 
and now feel the whole connection with the brain, with the, the upper endocrine system and feel if you can come up to the pineal, to the pituitary gland, the thyroid, thymus, pancreas, liver, adrenals, genitals, and feel you're walking into your own endocrine system. Feel the goodness, the light that's coming outside. Feel maybe, you know, let's emotions coming in relation with what you feel. And uh, here we can't do it, but it's going to be good to share words in relation with this, what's happening there. And then, you know, Victor Hugo used to say, if we can get rid of what we have in our head, you know, it's like winter in our head. And then when we go to our heart, it's like spring coming. So do you think I have time, Raymond? I can continue five minutes, 10 yes, minutes? Yes, that's perfect. Okay. Please and go. so I want to, to go now. Now, now we have clean, do that cleansing of our endocrine. Just be, just be in touch with your heart. I like these images from Alex Gray, you know, and just feel the connection with the earth. You know, this opening of your hand and your head and breathe into your heart. For, you know, Anthony Nori from Nostropath, heart is not only a pump, it's a generator. And uh, uh, it is still said that the heart was a dynamo, like on a bicycle, the bicycle. The brain was a battery and the nerves, the wires. So feel that heart as a generator of energy. It transforms any kind of energy in electricity. And all the memories which are everywhere in the, core, in the body, <coughs> you know, can be moved through the, through the, the heart. And then the blood function like a vortex. We did a, a meditation like time, last time on that blood as a vortex. Mm -hmm. Still used to speak of the heart like mother heart. And you know that uh, uh, at the beginning he was in cephalic position and then he went with the diaphragm into the chest. And the heart is the only organ open to the top open to the sky. All the other organs are open to, to the, the earth and the heart is open. The, uh, you know, the heart emits light and all the circulatory system. Huh? I don't go into the, the electromagnetism of the brain is thousand times more powerful than the one of the brain. You know? And so, if we can have a heart, listen to the heart viability of, uh, uh, you know, in relation with uh, emotion and mental, we can help to be more secure and to secure our right brain. So this communication between the heart, the brain and the body is neurological for Max Fraval. It's biophysical, it's biochemical through an electromagnetic field. And that's open for me to that fifth, to another dimension of osteopathy, including not only the biomechanical model, but including the emotions and the link, you know, with the spiritualization of the life field, you know, that's sending us to way of joy. I go a little bit quicker uh, quick on this way of explaining it, but you know, I just want to say if you just sen be centered in your heart right now to feel that energy is a connection and be the art, the real leader of your health, you can feel that freedom coming from the heart, which has no beginning, no end, you know, like. Uh, we see on this Mobius thing. 
So that's what I wanted to share. I put the the sources so you can have the different, you know, you can see from where it's coming. Am I back? Yes, yes, you're ah. back. And we that's why I put some yeah, me, I put the desert, you know, desert field, you know, the the energy without limit that we have in the desert, there's nothing. But that means there's everything is present. You okay with that? I, I, I thought Bordeaux has changed a lot since I visited last. <laughs> <laughs> but th th thank you for the lovely presentation. But uh, could you tell us again, how do you work with the patients on emotions? You were, uh, you were talking a lot uh, again about the principles and the metaphysics, we could say. But uh, what do you do in practice? How does you how does a treatment of a patient look like, and how do you help the patient to deal with difficult emotions? I have a routine of treatment, like every one of us, you know, and that's mm -hmm. I'm looking of a patient standing, then lying, and then you know already I have a lot of information coming just looking at you, for instance. Mm -hmm. you, you know, I'm sorry, the way you have your hand are crossed, you know, the, the way you put your head. Mm -hmm. You're breathing in your chest, you know, I, you can see a lot, have a lot of information with your face sense. That means adding my intuition, my emotion, my own emotions. And mm -hmm. so I look at the patient with all these elements. And when patients are speaking already, you have a lot of information. And then usually I scan the body of the patient, putting my hand on them. Mm -hmm. I scan the whole body first, and then I just make my own, you know, diagnosis, manual diagnosis. Why there's some tension there when I feel this, what I feel, mm -hmm. things. And I'm asking myself, is it mechanical? Is it more emotional? Or is it something that's, uh, you know, more metabolic? Mm -hmm. And it, That's a very that, interesting question, but then, how do you differentiate? How does it an emotional uh, problem feel different from a mechanical problem? Mechanical, you see, with mechanical tests, like a general treatment of osteopathy, you see all the elements. Mm -hmm. you know. But for me, when instead of finding, you know, uh, density, restriction of movement, when it's emotional, for me, it's more tension. It mm -hmm. means it's like when you put your hand on a drum skin. Sometimes on you put on your own belly, you can feel, you know, if your belly is like, you know, resistance is like uh, uh, density and you can, you know, on your belly, if you're on the liver, on the mm -hmm. spleen, on the, the intestine, but on that belly, if you have globally the sense of a, the skin of a drum, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, for me, that's something emotional. Okay. There's mm -hmm. another element, it's if it's more metabolic, for instance, women who have uh, had a lot of hormones from a long time, mm -hmm. when you put your hand on the belly, it's slim, it's like glue. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Your hand, it, it's glue. Yeah. That's me, me, it's more metabolic. It's because they took a lot of hormones. Mm -hmm. So that's only my own experience. Yes, you know? but but thank you. This makes it more practical and easier to imagine. But I interrupted you when you talk, were talking about your routine. So so please continue. Yeah, when you work on a cranium, for instance, mm -hmm. put your hand on a cranium, you, you can find some, you know, uh, mechanical things, you know, you know mm -hmm. about movement of flexion, extension, rot side bending, rotation, all what you know. But f for some other people, you even on babies, put your hand on the head, it's globally like a in boule de billard, je sais pas comment mm -hmm. dire. A billiard ball and a billiard kugel. Yeah. Yeah. You know, then <clears throat> that means for me, that's more emotional. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. And then when you treat, 
do you just treat the osteopathic dysfunctions or do you also talk with your patients about uh, emotions? So my main, my main tool is, uh, is the hands. Mm -hmm. But I'm using the, the, <clears throat> the words because I think it's important. From a diff from a specific perspective, that means when the people are moving, when I'm assessing, I'm, I don't speak on the emotional level. Ask question on that. It's only when I found a neutral, a place of stillness, mm -hmm. that I ask people to put words. And when they begin to put words, what they feel, what they see, what they because what they the sense because everybody different in the sensory event. And I continue with my hands to to detect, you know, the what is a liar or what's true. Sometimes people are speaking blah 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 blah. I'm not interested in that. Mm -hmm. But just say a word, they say dad, for instance, and poof, mm -hmm. you feel you tell your hand there's an answer. And then you see the emotional answers I speak of. Change of breath, rapid mm -hmm. emotion. Yes. Mm -hmm. use some heat in your hands. That means that connection with the emotional brain. Mm -hmm. And then I stay on that neutral place, <clears throat> myself and the patient. And from that place of neutral, I help people to have a dialogue with the pain, with the image, mm -hmm. with what they had. You know, and it's amazing. Some people go to past lives things if they are if they believe in past lives, they go to a very specific accident and they say, Oh, that was twenty years ago. Mm -hmm. And so you can go on the past, staying in the present now. You can go on the past, you know, and change the memory that you have now in your brain. You don't change what happened. Mm -hmm. Change the memory that's still there and that make a cyst that prevents that patient to be happy and healthy. Mm -hmm. So did, did I understand that correctly? You're not asking your patients about to talk about emotions, but just about their sensory experience while, uh, the, while, while you treat them. Is that right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And then I'm, I'm working a lot with um, psychologists doing a rapid eye motion technique mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know? and you know i let my patient speak with the psychologist i'm not a psychologist mm -hmm. what interests me as an osteopath is just that the people feel in their body better when they leave mm -hmm. and if they have emotions i just i'm i'm not an analysis and i don't do analysis yes. mm -hmm. i let them express the emotion if mm -hmm. they need but you know, also, I don't want people to go too, too deep into their emotions. Someone who's crying all the time, if he come, begin to cry, I said, OK, stop it now because I'm not interested. Someone who is really angry all the time, if you begin to be angry, I do, I'm not interested mm -hmm. in that. I, I think per personally, I, I, I have dif different experiences with different patients. Sometimes I feel patients go into emotions because it's what they always do. It's a routine. It's a pattern. And, and then I try to get steer them away from there. But sometimes I, I've, I have the impression that it's an, it's an authentic release and it's different from what's usually happening. And then I try to allow that and yeah, uh, I let the patient have that. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. Some usually when people say I come for emotional problem, I don't treat them on mm -hmm. emotional level. Mm -hmm. And when people say, you know, I come for mechanical problem, they go into emotional mm -hmm. things. Sometimes it's like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Yes, I agree with you. you know, I'm not a professional of emotions. Yes. Some colleagues refer me difficult patients because they think, you know, uh, I'm going to treat them on an emotional level, but often it doesn't work like mm -hmm. this. Mm. I agree with you. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Let's see if there are questions from 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 the audience. 
So, Christina Schröcker, thanking you for the for the lecture. And how are how are you working with babies who cannot talk? Is one of the questions. That's a good question. Yes, I think they talk through the cries so often. Mm -hmm. A crying baby is very interesting. I I remember well at the American Academy, you know, in uh, in, uh, in Colorado Springs mm -hmm. a few years ago. There were Viola Freiman, you know, there and. Uh, And um, uh, Nisette Sergeyev, I don't mm -hmm. know if Nisette, she's a French. She, she was one of my very first teachers in osteopathy. Even before we started the Vienna School of Osteopathy, uh, she, she, I, I, did, I, I attended another training and she was one of the lecturers. So I've known her since the oh. late 80s, probably. <laughs> and so she was my first teacher mm -hmm. in pediatrics. Uh, for you as well. Mm -hmm. I'm so thankful because... Thanks to her, I'm on this way, you know. And so I remember, you know, Nisette was speaking of the cries of babies in um, uh, when treating them, mm -hmm. you know, it's saying that they express emotions through cries, and uh, you know that uh, you know we don't, we shouldn't let people cry. And then Viola Freiman interrupts her, and when Viola Freiman was standing and saying something, everyone was listening. And she said, no, no, crying is a way to express and we have to let them express themselves. Mm -hmm. So I think we have to be careful because crying, if the baby is, is painful, is need food, babies are in the present. So they express their emotions through their whole beings. So you see in their behavior, they don't put words, but you see that in their behaviors. And otherwise mm -hmm. with baby often, I let the mothers put words. And sometimes mm -hmm. you just have the baby, you see the baby is not happy and you just mm -hmm. ask the mother, what do you have? And she said, oh, I'm thinking of that C-section I, I didn't want to have. Mm -hmm. And so yes. the mother expressing mm -hmm. the emotions. That emotional work with the babies is really important. You can, I did some videos you can see on my YouTube uh, chain videos of mm -hmm. baby the emotions but that's a good question yeah mm -hmm. thank you there is more let me let me see there's a comment since your last still point meeting i felt i feel my own heart uh, felt much better great meditation again thank you for your guidance helps me a lot so, and then <laughs> and another another listener who says thank you But no more questions for for tonight. Anything else you want you want to add? No, I, I thank you so much because I think it's in, I'm happy to share with humility my mm -hmm. practice. You know, and I think this level of work, emotional work, I think, and uh, and uh, uh, working with the heart is mm -hmm. something that's, you know important for me. There is so, what there is one more question. And, and it's an interesting one. Have you made the experience that certain emotions are, uh, are often manifested in typical regions of the body? Oh, yeah. Oh, I can't speak a lot of that mm -hmm. because there's a, a classical way of uh, explaining that in the Chinese medicine, for instance. Mm -hmm. think quickly, the fears are in relation with the kidney, you know, in general, you know, the angriness is in relation with the liver. What we, you didn't digest, you know, that uh, mm -hmm. you didn't uh, uh, accept is on the stomach more, you know, and then on the lungs, it's more in relation with the sadness. Mm -hmm. And people, you see, and then the heart is in relation with love and, and lack of love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Let's see. Yes. I think that was the last question for today. So thanks again. A great pleasure to have a chat with you and to hear from your work. And let, 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 we, we found a new date for, you, for your next course here in Vienna. I think it's in August. Is that correct? Yes, at the yeah. end of August. I think we, if we can come. Maybe I should come on my bicycle. I don't know. 
<laughs> well, you you maybe you have time enough during all of August to to cycle <laughs> over. Okay. Thank Good. you, Ren. How, wh whatever way you will be coming, I, I'm I'm looking forward to to seeing you then. Me Thanks too. again, have, yeah. and have a nice rest of the evening. Thank you. Thank you. Und ich danke auch euch allen fürs Zuhören, fürs Dabeisein für heute. Das Video wird in ein paar Tagen dann auch wieder online sein und vielleicht mit ein paar Kommentaren und vielleicht auch mit den Links äh, zum Nachlesen, die ihr jetzt nur kurz gesehen habt. Aber wir haben natürlich auch für die nächsten Tage ein Programm vorbereitet, das ich euch jetzt noch kurz beschreiben will. Für morgen haben wir eine Gastveranstaltung unserer Partnerorganisation. Die Internationale Akademie für Physioenergetik ist so etwas wie die Schwester der, der WSO, der Wiener Schule für Osteopathie. Und Margot van Asche wird da morgen in einem Webinar die Physioenergetik vorstellen. Das Webinar ist genauso gratis wie unsere öffentlichen Kaffeeabende, aber es soll doch in einem kleineren Rahmen stattfinden und wir bitten euch um Voranmeldung über den Website der Physioenergetik. Am Tag danach, einen Tag später, diesen Freitag, gibt es einen Dialog von Ralf Pariasek, äh, den, den die meisten von euch erkennen, gemeinsam mit dem Magister Dr. Dr. Stefan Fischerauer, der äh, einerseits zwar Student bei uns im ersten Jahr ist, aber andererseits ein Spezialist für Knie und für Kreuzbänder und der sehr viel in der Forschung auch gearbeitet hat und die beiden werden über Knie sprechen und über Studien dazu über Operationstechniken und werden sich da austauschen. Auch für nächste Woche gibt es schon einiges am Programm. Da ist es mir endlich gelungen, den Raphael aus seinem Corona-Urlaub herauszulocken. Der wird wahrscheinlich Montagabend was präsentieren. Es wird wieder eine Folge geben von Erichs Embryologiewerkstatt und es wird einen, ein, Claudia Knox wird etwas erzählen über Brustgesundheit aus osteopathischer Sicht. Vielleicht gibt es noch mehr, aber das sind einmal die Abende, die wir schon gebucht hatten und wir werden euch wieder etwas ausschicken. Wenn es euch gefällt, liked uns. Am liebsten ist uns, wenn ihr diese WSO-Seite, WSO.at Café liked und teilt. Dort finden alle Leute immer die aktuellen Links zu den vergangenen und zu den zukünftigen Videos. Vielen Dank fürs Dabeisein, schönen Abend und bis morgen oder übermorgen. <lacht>